Uh, later on in the program, Professor Richard Wolf will be with us. Uh, right now, the uh, Nancy Pelosi is holding the floor of the House of Representatives. I believe it's continuing to this moment. Uh, it's getting absolutely no coverage on CNN or MSNBC. I haven't uh, looked at Fox, but I'm sure that that's the case there, too. So uh, let's find out what's going on with that and everything else. It's Wednesday. It's our first hour. It's time for Middays with Mark. Congressman Mark Pocan, the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. His website, pocan.house.gov. You can tweet him at rep, as in representative, rep Mark Pocan, M-A-R-K-P-O-C-A-N. And Congressman Pocan, welcome back. Hey, Tom. Glad to be here. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. And I should, if, if, for people who might just be tuning in or listening for the first time, Congressman Pocan will be with us for the hour taking your calls. And, uh, but, but, but first, Congressman, uh, what's, what's the story with uh, Nancy Pelosi on the floor of the House? Well, you know, Nancy's on the floor, I think, telling stories of uh, dreamers uh, around the country. B because of our rules, she can kind of go unlimited, where the rest of us uh, would have various time limits. So uh, she's kind of telling everyone's story for us uh, because she can have the time on the floor. Uh, because what we're seeing with this um, continuing resolution, once again, that we're going to have and what we're hearing from what could be coming from the Senate is, uh, you know, once again, um, we're probably not going to get a solution to the DACA issue. And even if they get a vote in the Senate, which is what they supposedly got uh, from the last commitment on a continuing resolution, uh, we've got no commitment from Paul Ryan. Um, Paul Ryan is so deeply in the pocket of the Tea Party right now that there's no way uh, he's going to do the right thing uh, unless we put pressure on him. So that's what we're trying to do. But we're out here because the bill that passed the House yesterday, the continuing resolution, that provided defense spending through the end of the year, but not the rest of the spending, is dead on arrival in the Senate. So uh, Senate leadership has been working on a package. But again, if it doesn't include some things that we've been talking about, uh, you're going to find a lot of people over here aren't going to support it, and you may not have the support of the Tea Party. So it could be an interesting um, alliance, so to speak, uh, when that comes back. Is the Tea Party what I refer to as the Cokehead Caucus? They've, I think they've renamed themselves the so-called Freedom Caucus. Yeah, they're the ones who don't want spending for anything other than military. Um, and, uh, you know, clearly that's been one of our big issues, is that we wanted to maintain the parity that we've always had. You can't just have a big increase in defense spending and then, you know, wind up taking that later out of things that help people with health care and education, Meals on Wheels, Head Start, et cetera. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious if you uh, support or what your thoughts are. I'm sure you don't support it, but what your thoughts are on this plan that uh, Ivanka Trump and Marco Rubio are putting together to uh, give every, uh, I, I, it was pitched as every woman in America, maybe they'll extend it to men as well, uh, six months of, of uh, paid maternity leave, but it's paid out of your own social security. And if you take that, you have to uh, delay your retirement until 67 and a half rather than 67. This sounds yeah, crazy. Any, yeah, anytime we, we're touching social security, I mean, you know, the Republicans, Paul Ryan in particular, has been trying to privatize that for many years here in Congress. They want to put it into Wall Street's hands, let Wall Street make money, and we'll see if we get lucky right now. Just watching that big drop we had just over the weekend, right. you know, this is not the thing uh, that you want to put money in. And as you know, you've pointed out every eight years, you know, we see something in the cycle. You don't want to take that risk and, and move Social Security to something so um, uh, that could be so in jeopardy. And anything you do, I think that would take money out of Social Security puts it in jeopardy, and uh, we should actually be strengthening it, and I would argue making a different um, price index that affects what seniors spend money on. There's other things we can do that actually be beneficial. Uh, this wouldn't be beneficial. And before we pick up calls, is there anything that you wanted to share with us or uh, point out to us that, you know? <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of weird because we're in a holding pattern on the continuing resolution right now. We're trying to see, you know, what's going to come back from the Senate. Um, and then, of course, the Devin Nunez memo is still uh, everyone likes to talk about. But I'd rather, I think, uh, address whatever concerns your callers have. Okay, let's go to it. Morris in Long Beach, California, listening on KPFK. You are on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hey, good morning, everyone. Congressman, may I ask you a question, sir? Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you believe that the Russians have more influence over American politics than the Israelis? The reason why I ask is because the amount of money that we give the Israelis every year uh, through business or whatnot would pay for every kid in this country to go to college for free. Do you believe that the Russians have more influence over our politics than do the Israelis? And, sir, if you could answer yes or no first and then qualify it afterwards, I'd appreciate that. And well, Professor, well, Morris, first of all, I don't quite understand the question because uh, how Russia 
versus Israel, but then the money that goes to Israel. I, if you could help me just a little more understand what you're asking, I could maybe try to answer. I, 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 I dropped Morris. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, let me try to do my best in answering it. I, I just didn't understand because one part of the question didn't relate to the other part. Right. Um, you know, I, I would argue, I mean, while uh, clearly we put a lot of money uh, as a country into Israel, um, I don't know if uh, overall influence, I mean, they certainly have influence in the Middle East uh, to a large degree on our foreign policy, but I think, you know, uh, Russia, whether it be because of the size, because of what they're able to do uh, in the world, because of uh, things like the interference in our elections, I, I still think the, the supersized issue is uh, the issues that we have around Russia. But I think I understand the second part, although I didn't understand it to the question that, that Morris was saying, which is we do put an awful lot of money um, into Israel. And, you know, again, our foreign aid as a percent is really, really small. Israel does get a very large percent of that. Okay. Paul, in Kaysville, Kansas, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hi, Congressman. Uh, I am a U.S. citizen, and I am in process of seeking asylum where health care is a right. What is wrong with the concept of me donating my citizenship to someone who needs and deserves it? <laughs> Uh, it's it's interesting concept, Paul, both fronts, right? Uh, one, because uh, you're trying to find a, a country that's uh, more westernized and civilized because they actually have health insurance. I appreciate that. And secondly, you know, um, you know, clearly the issues around uh, immigration and citizenship uh, have to be addressed. I don't think under this president you're ever going to get a rational discussion um, because, you know, if all he can think about is building a wall – uh, it's a little bit hard to have an intelligent conversation around, you know, we're a nation of immigrants and what it means. And, you know, when they, they, they kept trying to say during the last shutdown that we wanted to let illegals in uh, over the issue of DACA when, you know, it's uh, a million and a half people, but 800,000 specifically that signed up for DACA that are already here. So, uh, again, it's hard to have that dialogue with this president and this Congress. Um, but we really need to have a serious dialogue. But I like your unique approach of thinking outside the box and how you're talking about it. Rick in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Rick, we just have a, a minute and a half to the break. Uh, quick question for Congressman Pocan. Uh, yeah, uh, there was just a couple things. Uh, one is I would like to see if we can have paper ballots on the next election. Um, I, I work in uh, information systems. I have a master's in the field, and um, it's the only way that we can guarantee that uh, things will go correct. Uh, Great. The, okay. The, 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 the Congressman, uh, you get one, one question per call. Congressman, paper ballots. Rex Tillerson says the Russians are already planning to mess with our elections, and, and we need to button yeah. up our election system. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we have a bill um, to pretty much uh, do that, require a paper ballot uh, in every machine so that we actually have something you can verify and recount. So it's a great idea. So do you think it's going to happen? Uh, with this Congress, no. I mean, the way they uh, deal with voting, um, period, you know, trying to do everything they can to try to scam the system, I think it's going to be very difficult. But I think, again, reasonable people understand why it's important. Maybe we can get some of this done at the local level and in states to try to help um, on that front. Are you, are, is there any rumbling in the Democratic caucus about, uh, you know, reinventing the Help America Vote Act to, uh, to replace voting machines with paper? Um, we have, like I said, we have a bill, and there's uh, some other efforts. I don't know about the Help America Vote Act specifically as the vehicle, but a number of us have talked about it. Yeah, good. Congressman Mark Pocan taking your calls for the hour. He's the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. He represents the state of Wisconsin. His uh, website is pocan.house.gov. You can tweet him at Rep Mark Pocan. We'll be back with more of your calls for the congressman. Right.